we're doing this. So my dear friend Hank Green recently made a video about how to get a colonoscopy, which is where they put a camera up your bum and have a little look-see around. There might be lots of different reasons why you might need one of these, but in mine and Hank's case, we both have ulcerative colitis. Yay! I have talked about my condition often enough on this channel. There is a whole playlist available for you to watch if you need to catch up on my whole health situation. But Hank's video inspired me because it was really interesting how the US and the UK are different. Obviously we know some of the most obvious ways that the US and the UK uh, health system uh, are different, but we're not gonna go into those. But all I'll say is that my colonoscopy cost me nothing, zero. Not to rub that in, but also I'm rubbing that in. But there are a few just other practical things that were different. I'm gonna leave the link to Hank's video in the description, so definitely go and watch that if you're interested in his experience. So the reason I'm making this video is because I'm having one today, yay! You might be thinking, but Hannah, you had your colon removed. How are you gonna have a colon Oscopy. And yes, you are correct. I'm not technically having a colonoscopy. I'm having what is called a flexible sigmoidoscopy because I still have my rectum and I'm having some inflammation issues in that rectum. The colitis symptoms are still hanging about. So I'm going in for a flexi sigmoidoscopy that just goes in part way. You can also have one of these procedures done when you still have your full colon intact. I actually did have one just over a year ago, where they just go part way in to like see what's going on. So I want to take you along with me for the journey today as much as possible. Obviously I'm not gonna show you the actual procedure, but I'm gonna take you along the process today. But I also wanted to talk about my history with colonoscopies because I find it fascinating how medicine has changed, how it's improved, because the first colonoscopy I had was 20 years ago, wow. And in medical terms, that is huge. So I was seven years old and it was 1999. And this was the procedure, them going in and having a look around was what diagnosed me. Which after the colonoscopy, they were like, you have ulcerative colitis. And then began my treatment and the rest of my life, whatever. So what you may know about colonoscopies now, if you've had one or someone you know has had one, is that you have to take bowel prep, which is basically like a laxative and it just completely flushes out your bowel. So it's all nice and clean inside so they can get the camera in there and have a look around. And then you're also not allowed to eat. And this bowel prep is like a day, like 12 to 24 hours. However, in 1999, it was three days. I was a seven year old. And so I was on the hospital ward for three days, wasn't allowed to eat. And the bowel prep that you had to take, like now it is like one or two liters of liquid that you have to drink over that time period to like flush yourself out. This was like liters upon liters of what I remember it being like gray beige sludge. And the doctors were like, try it, see if you like it. But most people find it horrendous because you do have to drink it for three days and you're not eating anything. I tried it. No, couldn't do it. So the way that they get it into you is tube up the nose and into your stomach. Oh boy. I don't really remember like a lot of childhood stuff just because of the nature of memories but I do remember this and I remember being sat on a table or a chair or something and them shoving the tube up my nose and I was screaming it was so painful and either my mum or my dad were there or both one of them like squeezing their hand or something and then they'd also given me a toy that had like beads in it that spiraled down and you'd like twist it up and down and I would be twisting that up and down while screaming, having a tube put up my nose. But once it was in, it was fine. And then I just had this drip that I carried around with me for three days on the hospital ward that was feeding me the laxative and then just going to the toilet constantly and not allowed to eat. So over the last 20 years, we've gone from three days of prep to like 12 to 24 hours of prep. Bless modern medicine. The other big difference to when I had the colonoscopy then and today is because then I was a child, now I'm an 
adult. I don't know if this has changed recently because I've not been under children's care in the NHS for 10 years now, but when you're a child, they completely knock you out for a colonoscopy. So you get the full general anesthetic and you are asleep. And when I was seven, I remember them putting this face mask on me and telling me to blow up this balloon. And so I was blowing up the balloon and then anytime I inhaled to get my breath back, I could taste the anesthetic and I was screaming and I was pushing off. I was not happy to be there, but then I passed out. So that happened. But then since being over 18, they just give you painkillers and sedative. So you're like really high and drowsy. It really is fine. The only times I've had like really painful or uncomfortable colonoscopies is when I've been in the middle of a flare up. So like right now I'm feeling good, perfectly healthy, happy, happy. So I'm not worried about today. I think today is gonna be fine. <laughs> Touch wood. Blah. And previously as well, like you don't really feel it. It's kind of uncomfortable, but you're just like off your tits. So it doesn't really matter. But if you're in the middle of a flare up and you're really ill, oh, it's just, like being ill and then being given sedatives and you're just in pain and then you're in more pain and it is just a hot, hot mess. Not fun. Today I'm getting a flexible sigmoidoscopy and I have this little diagram in the leaflet they gave me. This is your digestive system. This um, organ here is your colon. I don't have that anymore. Um, I just have a little bit of my rectum over here. So for the flexi, they just go in, I think they just go up to here, but for me, they're just gonna probably go as far as they can until, until it stops. <laughs> Am I pointing at the right side? I think it's that way they go. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not a doctor. Which way do they go? This way, this way. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> so there's something else that is different about my procedure today than previous ones I've had. You might be thinking, but Hannah, the laxatives? Surely you don't need laxatives because everything that you digest comes out of your stoma and you're not gonna need to clear out your rectum because there's no food going in there. You're right, I don't have to take the laxatives. So I'm not constantly on the toilet today. However, I do still have to fast because they said that the sedative can make you vomit. They're just like, just don't have any food in you. So I had breakfast this morning, colonoscopies in the afternoon, flexible sigmoidoscopy, no laxatives for me. And here's the thing about laxatives. This is my pro tip. You know, if you've got a colonoscopy coming up, ask for a different laxative to Movi Prep. <sighs> so in my experience, there might be more on the table now. There are two different laxatives that they offer you. One is called Movi Prep and the other is called Picolax. I have tried both. Movi Prep does not agree with me. Movi Prep is like the orange, flavored one and huh, I could not drink it. To the extent where I went to my appointment to have the colonoscopy and because I hadn't drank enough of it, they couldn't do the procedure because I wasn't flushed out enough. And that is when they gave me Picolax, which is more blackcurrant flavored. Um, and ever since then, every time I've had a colonoscopy, I have been like, give me Picolax. I don't want to waste any more NHS time by turning up to colonoscopies and not being able to do them. So give me Picolax. You might be different. You might be able to handle Movie Prep. I couldn't, but I'm just letting you know that there is an alternative out there because from what I've heard, Movie Prep seems to be the standard that they offer, first of all. And that's always been the case for me. They always just go, here's some Movie Prep, and I'm go, ah, no. Wait a second. If you've had colonoscopies in the past and you've had Movie Prep and you've hated it, I would recommend asking for some Picolax. There might be some other bowel prep out there now that I haven't heard of. So do a little research if you really hate the stuff that your doctor has given you. I really hope there's the video screen. That was my favorite thing. Like, so the first colonoscopy I had as an adult on the NHS was when I was 18 and I was really nervous because obviously it was the first time I was having this procedure that I'd had many times before, but I was previously unconscious. So the first time I was gonna be awake and my favorite thing about it was the fact you're lying on the side and you can see the screen. So you can see inside your bowel and you're high and you're like, what? The worst part though of the screen is just that brief moment as the camera is coming towards your butthole <laughs> before it gets inside. Oh, no one wants to see that. Anyway, 
I'm so hungry. What time's my appointment? Right, my appointment is in an hour. Normally I cycle to my hospital, but I won't be able to cycle home. So I'm gonna have to find a different way of getting to my hospital. And then Dan, my boyfriend, is coming to pick me up afterwards because after you've had sedatives, they don't let you leave the hospital unescorted. And that is rightly so. You're not allowed to drive. You're not allowed to cook, do any like hard physical labor, and you're not allowed to sign legal documents for 24 hours. I've already texted Dan just being like, I want a kebab tonight. <laughs> we'll see what I feel like later. So just in case I'm too messed up from the sedative to end this video, thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I don't know, let me know in the comments your pro colonoscopy tips. Have you ever had one? And of course, check out Hank's video of him getting a colonoscopy. I just love it. I love seeing like, IBD colitis stuff on YouTube makes me very happy and make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell and I'm gonna leave you with whatever happens next <laughs>
And that's how you get a colonoscopy slash flexible sigmoidoscopy. I don't know how people give birth just on gas and air. I don't know how you do it. That sounds horrendous.